What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna check out an add-on that comes with a very complete library of trees, grass, rocks, basically anything you could want to create landscapes in Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so Botanic is an add-on from Polygonic. We've talked about it in the past, but there's been a fairly significant change in the way that it works that I wanted to make sure that I talked about on the channel because it can be a little bit confusing, but I think it's a good move. Big thanks to the guys over at Polygonic for getting me a copy of the Botanic update, update to try out for this video. And so Botanic is basically a large library of things like trees and grass, flowers. Um, they've got all sorts of different garden assets, just a ton of different stuff for those exteriors. And so the way that this used to work is you download this and it was kind of a standalone add-on. Note, by the way, this has a starter version, a light version, and then a full version, depending on what you're looking for. Um, but the way that this used to work is you would download this and it was a standalone add-on for Blender. They have now changed this. Basically, everything runs through their new InGone Asset Manager, which we talked about in the past. So that's a free tool that you can download that gives you access to um, the different tools that are contained inside a Botanic, Materialic, Traffic, and Aquatic. And it also helps you easily bring in those asset files. You can download this for free and install it in Blender. But once you do that, now each one of these other tools, so Botanic, Materialic, Traffic, and Aquatic, um, all act as asset collection. So you're basically buying an asset collection that integrates with Ngon. And so basically all of these tools where you adjust things like the brightness and season of your trees, um, you do particle scatters with the different objects, you add animations, all of those tools are built using Ngon now. And then you install the polygonic ass assets or the botanic assets as an asset library that integrates with this tool. So let's jump over into Blender and take a look at the way that it works. And remember that you can scroll down and you can see all of the different assets that are contained in here. There's a ton of different tree types, shrub types, uh, all sorts of different stuff in here. But let's jump over into Blender. And so what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you've installed the InGon Asset Browser. I made a video about this, which I can link to in the notes down below showing you exactly how that works. But then you've got this InGon window over here that gives you access to the different tools. But for now, what we wanna do is we wanna go into our preferences and we wanna go find InGon in our add-ons section. So we wanna go to InGon and when you find that, it's going to have an option in here to install your asset packs. And so to install your asset pack, what you do is you just scroll down and you click on the button to install asset pack. And so basically what's gonna happen is you're gonna download a PAQ file, that's a packed asset file. Um, in this case, I want the botanic full. And when I select that, what's going to happen is this is going to install this in whatever directory you pick, which is nice that you can pick a directory, by the way. And so you can go pick whatever directory you want. You can select that. And then this is going to install those assets into that folder. So I'm going to click on OK right here. And this takes a minute because it's unzipping basically a uh, four gigabytes worth of stuff and placing it in that folder, but it's gonna set these up as assets that you can then access inside of Blender. All right, and so once you do this, what's gonna happen is this folder is going to show up as being installed. And so basically what this does is this installs the assets in the folder that you dictated right here. And you can just reference this. And then once you do that, this is gonna pop up the different options for the different add-ons. So now let's jump over and take a look at the Botanic assets. So to do that now, what you do is you can either find them in the Blender Asset Browser. So you can just go to the Blender Asset Browser and when it installs them, um, they're going to show up in here. So for example, if I go to the Botanic Full right here, notice how those assets are going to show up in here. So you can just use the regular Asset Browser if you want to. And you can see how you've got access to all of those different plant files, right? For whichever one you got. If you got the starter version, you'll have fewer plants. If you got the full version, you'll have more plants. But notice how they're split up in here into things like coniferous and deciduous trees, flowers, garden objects, grass objects, all these different things are contained over here on the left-hand side and you can find them really quickly. Now, alternatively, what you can do as well is there is the Botanic Asset Browser. And so let's say, for example, that I wanted to look through the assets using that Asset Browser. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open a window 
here. And then when I click on the option for browse assets, I can pick a window in here for that asset browser. In this case, I'm gonna pick this one right here, but this is going to give you access to their asset browser. And the cool thing about their asset browser um, is that you can use it to look for um, different things within each one of the asset packs here, but then you can also filter by tags and dimensions as well as plant class in here. So it gives you a lot more options for different ways that you can sort, right? You can sort by the amount of data they take up, just a lot of different things in here. But you could go find like grass or something like that, and then you can just click on it and bring it into the scene. You can also just click and drag them out of the Blender asset browser. Either way, you can bring those into your scene using this tool. Now, where this gets a little bit interesting is notice how the InGon asset browser is now where the different tool sets are contained. So let's say that I was to bring in a tree. Um, so we'll go back to the botanic and we'll bring in just a regular, we'll go with a deciduous tree. So maybe this one right here. So we'll just bring that in. We'll notice how all of those things that previously were in the botanic add-on are now all showing up inside of this uh, InGon tool right here. And so you've got options in here to do things like adjusting the brightness of your tree, the different seasons, right? So we can do winter, spring, autumn, like this, um, as well as adjusting the hue for the leaves and the branches in here. So you get access to all of those directly inside of the InGon tool now, as opposed to having to install the separate botanic um, tool in here. And then you can also do things like adding your animation. Remember that with these tools, in order to edit them or make them adjustable, you need to select it and go up to the conversion process right here and make it editable. But once you do that, notice how now I can add things like animation. And so they've got their different, uh, they've got their different kinds of animations in here. So you can pick a best fit, or in this case, we're gonna pick the wind tree. We're gonna click on okay. And so when I do that, now if I hit the space key and play this, notice how this tree has that animation applied to it. And you can adjust things about that using the drop down in here, which is actually pretty easy to use. So notice how I can bring that strength up or I can bring it back down to something a little more mild. So if I click on set, then notice how that's going to apply that new wind strength in here like this. And so again, you've got options in here to like randomize the animation offset so they're not all getting the exact same animation applied at the same time. All right, and so a lot of those really useful functions that previously were contained inside of the botanic tool are now contained inside of Ingon. And so let's say I was to bring another tree in here. So we'll go to coniferous right here and we'll bring in one of these trees. Notice how when you bring this in, you've got the option in here to transform that selection and move it to the ground. So say I was to drop this in here like this, then I was to move that tree up. So say it got placed somewhere other than on the ground. Notice how the object origin is on the ground right here. And there's an option to snap to ground. So you can use this in order to snap your selection to the ground. You can also use it to randomize things like the rotation and the scale of your tree in here. So notice how every time I click on that random button, it's going to randomize the rotation scale and a little bit of the tree orientation. Um, not super strong, but a little bit. But then you can also undo that if you want to take it back to the way that it was before. All right, but then you can also use this to scatter instances on a surface. So let's say for example that we wanted to scatter, um, let's make something a little smaller actually. I was gonna make a big scene, but let's make a small plane, something like this. So I'm just gonna scale it up a little bit and we'll apply our rotation and scale when we do that. But what I wanna do is within the InGon tab, you can click on the plus button in order to add a particle system to scatter on the surface. So if I click on okay, notice how it creates that particle system. Well, then all I have to do is give it some objects in order to uh, spread, right, or to scatter. So we'll drag a couple of the grass objects in here. So maybe some of this grass right here. We'll just bring a couple of these in like this. And then notice what that does is that brings those in. If they don't get brought in as editable meshes in here, so if they look more like, uh, if they look more like this with these collections in here, you just want to convert them to editable so that they're going to show up in your particle 
system. But I went ahead and I dragged those in. Well, now you can drag those into the particle system that Ngon creates. And then you can just scroll down. And one thing that we are going to want to do is we're going to want to add some additional detail in here in order for this to work, right? If you don't have that vertex detail in here, it's not going to do a very good job. Um, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring that in. And then as soon as you bring the grass into this particle system, you can click on the refresh button in order to get that to refresh in here. And there's something weird going on with the way that the rotation is set up in these right now. I can't really figure it out. Um, you can bring the phase down to zero on all of these. And then you can just change the orientation in order to get that show up. But something with the rotation is not rotating properly on the uh, object X, Y, or Z axes right now. I can't figure that one out. So if anybody has a solution to that one, let me know. Um, but you can adjust things like the number of objects that are being emitted in here, right? So notice how I can bring this up or down. Um, and you can use this in order to really quickly create particle systems that go on your objects. And so say I wanted to add another one like rocks or something like that, I could go ahead and I could um, take the rocks objects that are here, drag a couple of those into my scene like this. And notice how this created a separate particle system. Um, and what I could do is I can bring this way down, right? I could say that I want this to create like 30 of these objects, but I'm just going to drag those rocks into my second particle system and then do the same thing. I'm going to bring this in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set the rotation to the global Y right here. And right now I can bring the scale up and down on those objects. But notice how you can set the scene, um, other things like that. All of those tools are currently contained inside of the Ingon system, but then you reference the polygonic assets. And so there are options in here to do more of a vertex paint, which I'm not going to worry too much about for right now. Um, but you can also do a vertex paint within that system. And so one other cool thing that's contained in here is notice how we do have collections of different presets. So like, for example, I can scroll through these and I can look at them and say that I liked, uh, say that I like this shrubs collection right here. Well, what I can do is I can drag that into my scene right here. When I drag that shrubs collection into the scene, notice what it does is it brings a folder in here that you can access and it put it in here for some reason, which I don't really want. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and drag these collections back out, but notice how I can reference these. So if I add a new particle system to this surface right here, for example, so I'm just gonna add a new particle system. Notice how that shows up in my particle systems is particle zero two. And I can drag these collections in here. Well, when I do that, I can set this to reference that particle system 02 and notice how that's going to bring in and scatter based on that particle system right here. So then I can bring the number of objects down so I'm not getting so many because they are pretty big. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the scale down on these like this. But notice how you can use those preset systems in order to add detail to a surface really quickly um, using Botanic as well. So they've also ported their Vine system over to Geometry Nodes. So if you go into your asset browser and you look under the Vines section, notice how there's a Vine system that you can drag on here. And basically the way that's going to work is that's going to be a Geometry Node system for those Vines. And you can actually see this by going into the modifier right here. And notice what this is going to do is this is going to allow you to set things like a target object right here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this closer to my body model right here. Note how this kind of starts with like a base point right here, but then what you do is if you tab into edit mode, there's a curve associated with this, right? Well, I'm just gonna hit A and I'm gonna delete out the vertices, but then I'm going to draw a new curve on the surface like this. So notice how as I draw on the surface, this is gonna come in here and this is going to add vines and leaves on top of my Bonnie model right here. You wanna be a little bit careful with this, obviously. So in this case, right, I might take these and move them back whoops, over here. But 
Notice how then I have options to do things like adjusting the scale of the leaves and the merge distance of the vines in here um, in order to more accurately add vines. I can adjust things like the density of the leaves. I can adjust the minimum and maximum scale um, as well as some other things having to do with the leaves. So if you wanna add vines and ivy to a surface, um, you can use this vine generator using geometry nodes in order to do that. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. I like the new integration with Ingon. I think there's a couple things that they're still working on, but overall, I think this makes managing all of these different assets a lot easier. Botanic has a very deep library of assets, so I've always been happy with that. So I think this is a move in the right direction. But leave a comment below, let me know what you think. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.